Okay guys, you got me. I have been cheating. This entire time I had a second camera I didn't tell anybody about. And actually today I'm going to expose that camera. I'm going to tell you all about it, but because you already know the title of the video and the thumbnail, what the heck. This is the uh, Olympus EM1 Mark II. O and D M1 Mark II actually, I always get that wrong. And I also have it with the Olympus 12 to 100 millimeter Paul Lens and Zoico. And I'm gonna tell you my experience with it. Obviously I'm not a professional photographer, I'm not a wedding photographer or whatsoever. I'm just the guy who got this camera for around uh, a month and a half. And I had the chance to use it, I had the chance to actually experience uh, what this camera can do and I'm actually showing you uh, my beautiful landscape outside my house which I just recorded today this morning and you know what the sharpness of this whatever this camera produces is mind-blowing obviously it's a combination of a lens and the camera but overall I felt like the camera was really easy to use and with these specific lens, the, the images and videos are just mind-blowing in terms of sharpness and colors and it, it felt real and it wasn't hard to maneuver the camera and get it to do what you want. The EVF was great, it's uh, actually a 120 frames per second EVF, but I'm not gonna make this video a specs video. I really wanna tell you my down-to-earth experience with using it after using, I think, uh, a camera from Panasonic, the G85, which is not that good as this one. So before I start, I just want to tell you about my channel for like 10 seconds. I'm Rotodil and I've been reviewing gadgets for the past couple of years. I invite you to join my channel because I'm going to do, give I'm going to do giveaways soon and I want you to, do a part, to be a part of my giveaways. In this channel, you'll find cool gadget reviews just like this one. And sadly, this camera is not going to stay with me as I'm going to return it. But I am grateful that I did have the time to actually test out the camera. So definitely join me. And if you don't see the subscribe button down below, tilt your phone and then you will be able to see it. Click on it so it won't be red anymore. We don't like the color red here on Rotodeal. And also click on the bell icon if you see that one also. So even though I told you I don't want to force specs at you, I'm just going to say something that I think are important in terms of actual details about this camera. We are looking at a micro filter sensor. It's not a big sensor as a full frame, it's actually half the size. That means that as you can see here, this is a smaller sensor, you'll get less light inside it. So you really need a low f-stop number on your lens. Sadly, this is a very expensive lens, but the f-stop on it is a constant f4. If you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, that means that basically you are not getting a lot of light in it, but you have 12 to 100 millimeter range on it. And as this is a micro four thirds camera, basically that means that it's actually 24 to 200. And that means that you have a lot of zoom. <laughs> and uh, you also get a constant F number. That means that you don't see the light change when you zoom in. That's the, base, that's the basics of uh, camera, um, of how cameras work, but having an F4 is great, it's not the best, sadly. And that means that if you take videos or photos like in my situation right now, you'll definitely need to use a light source, like I have one behind the camera right now to actually uh, record video at, uh, uh, in a way that will, <laughs> will be visible without too much noise. We also have a 20.4 megapixels on that sensor. That means that you get a high quality, very high quality image, images from this camera. And as you can see right now, the images are just beautiful. You can zoom in. 20.4 megapixels is good enough for everything I'm doing on the internet right now, which is producing videos like this one, which you are actually watching and uh, images for social media, for uh, 
my Facebook page or whatever. So if you are like me, this might be a very good camera for you. And it has been released actually in 2016 and it's still one of the best cameras I think are out there. It's actually one of the flagship camera from Olympus. So this camera also has a quad-core processor. That means that you can do a lot of neat stuff with it like HDR and uh, it can process the images uh, like the way it actually saves them to the SD card very fast. And because the files are not that big, it will be very easy to work with them after you actually take them and move them to the computer. And I'm also using the screen over here because I just want to show you the type of screen we have here. This is a variangle screen. So I can basically use this camera as a selfie camera. You just need a wide angle lens, not a 12 millimeter, something wider if you can, and actually record yourself and see what you are recording. And when you are not recording yourself, you can tilt it back and then uh, just see what, you are what, you are, what shots you are uh, taking. You can even take uh, photos or videos from up above, which is something I've done recently on an event I've been. So I really like this variangle screen. It's the best combination of an LCD screen that you can have on a camera. Now this camera has a billion features, a billion functions. I'm not gonna go through everything because only the manual from this, for this camera is 150 pages. I am gonna put at the end of this video a quick video of me just talking about the different buttons that we have on the camera so you can actually feel the camera like I had a chance to do that uh, during the, the last two months. So I'm a hybrid shooter, I take videos uh, for my job as you can see now on YouTube but I also take photos of my family and of vacation time, whatever. And this is a hybrid camera, that means that I'm getting great video from it, 1080p, 60 frames per second. Sadly, no slow motion or more than 60 frames per second on it, which is a big bummer, I must add. And also, we are talking about a camera that can shoot in 4K. And 4K, you get up to 30 frames per second. I'm usually shooting at 24 frames per second, like this video over here, to get a more cinematic look. You can also see another video I took this morning of a wildlife uh, near, my, near my area. And that also looks very good at 24 frames per second. It's a bit cinematic and I love that. The camera has in-body stabilization, but also in this lens, I have also stabilization on it. So I have two parts of the camera giving me stabilization and that provides me the ability to take amazing video shots that are super stable, even when I zoom in. So that's something that I think is really important, at least for me. And because we are, looking, we are talking about a micro third sensor and there are many people talking about why micro third is actually better if stability is important to you, that is, that is like one of the top priorities for me, having a stable camera. Because if my video is shaky, I think it's more unusable for me than having less depth of field, which is how you divide the actual subject that you are taking a photo or video or video of and uh, how you divide them from the background. So for me, important thing is stability. And if it's important for you, you gotta take a look at this kind of camera, any micro four thirds, uh, basically most of the micro four thirds cameras are gonna have uh, some type of in-body stabilization. And uh, if you're getting one of these, you wanna make sure that it's inside the, the camera. And here we see that we have five axis in-body stabilization which is just amazing. The more access you have, the better. Because this is a smaller camera, you can actually save photos, uh, like burst shoot photos for 15 photos a second. That's just amazing. So you can basically capture any action shots very easily and correctly and accurately using the face detect autofocus that this has. And uh, I think it's really an important thing if this is for you. For me specifically, not really. I'm usually taking photos of family, of people, wildlife when I'm uh, going out for a trip, but that's not something I base my camera choosing on. But if you're taking photos of sports or any movement, moving subjects all the time, this camera is definitely gonna do the job for you. Like always, I'm putting links in the description of this video below for all of the products that I'm talking about. In this case, obviously, the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. Um, so definitely check that out if you want to if you want to see the pricing for this amazing uh, camera and body and lens. Other neat features that we have here is a Wi-Fi connection you can connect using an app. 
uh, transfer photos or videos and actually control the camera if you want to take photo of yourself without being behind the camera. That's a very useful feature if you want to use this camera more than often and just take pictures of the family and I use that a lot on my Panasonic camera which is a different company obviously but has the same feature using the Panasonic app. Many other camera brands don't have that functionality so props to Olympus for having that Wi-Fi function and it works just great. This camera is waterproof, dust proof, anything proof and nah, nah, I'm just joking but still you probably unless you throw it out of the window it's gonna it's gonna take care of anything or any situation you're gonna be in so take it out to shoot in the rain or whatever it's going to work for you and if it, that is important for you you want to get something that's reliable and this is reliable believe me i had constant rainy season for right now for two months and i wouldn't take any other camera than this outside so I just want to summarize uh, the couple of big things that I had uh, experience using this camera, which I think are very useful. First of all, we are looking at a micro fur first camera, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do this video just about micro fur first. But when I actually look at this camera, one of the big features here is that it's it's a smaller sensor, so the weight here is smaller and the lens size is smaller. So we are looking at a 24 to 200 full frame equivalent, equivalent lens. Um, the f-stop is not the same obviously, we are getting a lot less light inside, but still if you are taking videos and photos mostly outside or you have a light source most of the time or you just want a camera to do take out of your studio, this is going to be amazing. You're going to be able to carry out um, to take this uh, to take, to take this lens and body combination and have an amazing ability to, to use such a small lens and capture objects that are very far away from you. If stability is important for you, this is definitely gonna be one of the top players in the stability game. Panasonic also has some good options, but still I would, you know, I would test out both of them, see what feels better in the hands. This is very important before you spend a lot of money uh, on any camera by the way, go to the shop or whatever. So I feel like if stability is important for you, you either have to be with Panasonic or Olympus because these are the big stability players in the world. The price is a big thing here. I mean, it's expensive, but still if you compare that to the full frame world, it's nothing for a, for a lens like this. So you are, you are paying top dollars here because this is a flagship camera after all. But still, comparing this to a full frame equivalent, you would pay around double or more. So if your budget is uh, limited, maybe that's a good option for you. The last thing is, uh, this is a hybrid camera after all. I mean, I use it for photos, I use it for videos. So um, if you're like me and you want to face detect in video autofocus, and you also have the ability to take great still photos with it, this camera is just amazing. It does both worlds and it does it very, very good, as you can see right now. And regarding the lens, this is the 12 to 100. I just want to show you the zoom range on it. And as you can see, it also uses the autofocus system um, just to gain focus once I do change that zoom range. And you know what? The lens is good. I wish it had a lower f-stop number. I feel like 4 is just, even though it's constant, it's just too much. It's a, it's a full frame equivalent 8 f-stop from what I understand. So that's, that's one thing I didn't like about the lens. I would get like a fast prime, a 1.7 something, um, just to uh, do most of my uh, photos and maybe uh, a 2.8 uh, Leica lens um, to get it like uh, to get less range but still have more light in the camera for these uh, nighttime shots. This camera also has a bunch of other neat advanced functions. I'm gonna talk about what I experienced but I think I can't cover everything here as only the manual for this camera was around 150 pages. One feature that I find interesting was the HDR mode and there's another feature that you can use which basically takes 50 megapixels uh, photos by using the 5 axis uh, uh, stabilization feature and you know these are amazing features and if you know when to use them and how to use them this is gonna make you um, basically help you get amazing photos or videos 
And before we finish this video, I just want to go with you to the, on the different buttons that I have on the camera for my experience, what I use less or more. And then I'm going to come back here and summarize the video. Okay guys, so here is the camera and as you can see, um, it's quite amazing. It's already turned on obviously. And one thing which sucks is that, like I said, uh, this button is on the left side of the camera and not on the right side. So you gotta have two buttons, two hands to actually turn it on and off. There are four buttons that are really important with this camera and basically it's this one, this one, and this one, and this one. So <laughs> this will enable you to change mode. So for example, currently I'm in manual mode. This basically enables me to change between, um, change all the different options I have while taking photos. So I have the uh, aperture priority set over here, which I can change the aperture of my uh, camera. I have the, this uh, option over here that changes the shutter speed. And I can actually use this button over here to switch to uh, change the ISO over here and the white balance over here. So basically these three uh, change the different options. And over here, I'm changing between modes. If I want to take photos, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to move between P to M. And I'm also going to change to this mode, which is the um, creative uh, movie mode. <laughs> That's where you're going to take all your videos. So the screen is over here. As you can see, it's uh, a very angle screen. I love it. Um, it's also tiptable to the front. It's, uh, you can take videos or photos of yourself. And I'm just going to turn the camera on so you guys can see it. Um, we are seeing that this is uh, the LCD screen. It's, you can touch it. You can change what touching the screen actually means. So if I click on this button and then touch uh, the screen, it's going to take a photo. So this is something you can do, which is really nice if you want to take quick shots or action shots. Uh, by changing the button again, I'm going to change the focus. And also I have lots of customizable buttons like these two over here in the front. So for example, if I want to see uh, what, what my shots look like without all the depth of field, I can actually press on that one customizable shot and I'm going to have an icon over here that basically says that I'm uh, actually canceling uh, depth of field and uh, you get a really nice uh, shot that shows you everything in focus. Um, other than that, as you can see, I'm all the way in right now. Just going to show you an image I'm going to take uh, with the camera and um, this is just amazing because this is what you get with the 12 to 100. The zoom range is just amazing. I just wish it wasn't an F4 constant. It's too much for me. I guess that's one of my biggest disappointments. Uh, another thing that I found that was really interesting is the HDR mode over here. By clicking on it, as you can see, I can change the um, HDR modes. I can actually see that I have HDR1 or 2. I can take a bunch of shots and the camera will combine them for a high dynamic range shot. And also I can change by clicking on this button to a silent mode, which is basically gonna record photos without any noise. And that's just amazing. And uh, if we keep looking at the different buttons and options here, we'll see that we have the two card, two SD card slot over here. And this does feel high quality and that really sucks. And also we have the headphone jack, the microphone jack, the HDMI and USB slot over here, it's a USB-C, and uh, the remote shutter control over here. Um, lots of different functions button like this one over here. So if you click on it, you can basically change where your focus is without touching the screen. I guess that's useful if you can actually touch the screen for some reason, as you can see right now. And uh, I think that's most of the buttons I've been using. And also the slideshow button over here on the bottom gonna show you this one. So clicking on it will just show you your last photo. I haven't been able to actually preview videos for some reason. Also we have the quick menu which is nice if you click on the OK button you will basically get an option to access all the different settings of the camera and um, that's really important because it's really easy to change between settings. So one of the things you can do is uh, actually customize the customizable buttons by clicking on this uh, icon. And then you'll be able to change whatever each function button actually does. So that is really amazing and uh, I think it's really important actually. So another thing you can do is actually change the ISO and white balance or exposure. But you can also change only the midtones or the highlights. So for example, if I want to change 
um, just the highlights, I can click on this button and then I can actually use uh, this button on the font and change only the highlights or I can actually change just the mid-tones if I click on the info button and uh, switch uh, the histogram over here to change the mid-tones. That basically means that I'm getting more details or less details on the mid-tones or highlights or shadows. So that's amazing. You usually do that with your editing software and not with the camera. And in this case, as you can see, you have it on the camera already. So if you want to save some time, um, you can do that. You have the hot shoe over here. You have the EVF over here. So everything you need in this camera on the actual lens, I have an IS button over here that I can basically uh, disable image stabilization. I have a function button, which I can change. I have the zoom range button, which will change my uh, um, depth of field and also my zoom range from 12 to 100, which is a full frame equivalent of 24 to 200, usually a very big lens. And here we get it, um, as you can see, uh, it's such a small size and weight. And also I have the focus system over here. So overall, a very good camera, feels great in the hands. I really like it. I'm kind of bummed that this is a uh, plastic key too plasticky for me. Um, the camera battery bay is over here. I'm just gonna make sure I turn it off. And uh, as you can see here, the camera battery is quite big. It doesn't feel that high quality. I don't know why. It doesn't feel like the connector here is too high quality. It looks a bit cheap, uh, but that's that's just one thing. I, I, uh, I mean, if that's gonna last for years, who cares, you know? So all in all, that's the camera tool for you, a tripod jack over here, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. Let's go back to the studio and talk about uh, what I think about the camera for my experience. So I hope you enjoyed this impressions video of the Olympus camera. I think it's one of the best cameras I've had personally. I had it for two months, so I didn't have enough time to test it out, but I felt like it's gonna be very sad for me to give it back. And uh, maybe in the future, I'm gonna actually purchase it. But for now, we are using one old G85 camera that's basically taking this video. And you know what? It also gets the job done. So if you want me to do a, a video about the G85, just let me know in the comments below. Other than that, I was Rotary. Thank you very much for watching. Like always, links in the description below. And also, I have two videos over, you, over here for you to watch. You get the option to subscribe to the channel. Come on, man. I want to see you on my next... Uh on my next uh, gadget review and also another video over here. Thank you very much for watching. I was Roto Deal. Bye bye.